Well, we're still on with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. If you just joined, thank you so much. And if you have joined prior to this time, we say thank you as well. Nika Gule will be joining us for the next conversation as a public affairs analyst as we look at the case of police brutality. Uh, Nick, uh, many thanks for joining us and compliment of the season. Thank you very much, Messi. Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to our viewers. All right, then. Well, Nick, there seems to be no end in sight to Nigerian uh, police brutality. As a policeman attached to Aja Police Station, Lagos State shot dead a female lawyer, Bolanle Rahim. That was on Sunday and that was on Christmas Day. The Nigerian Bar Association has, however, identified the police officer who killed the lawyer. The unnamed uh, policeman attached to the Aja police station and his team were said to have tried to stop Rahim and her family members as they drove back home from, you know, Christmas Day church service. Uh, the lawyer was shot when the car she was on tried to make a U-turn around Aja bridge. I know you know, I mean, if you live in Lagos, I'm, you probably might be conversant, especially if you... Uh, move around that era. While the incident has sparked widespread criticism, the Lagos State Police Command has said that an assistant superintendent of police and two other of officers were currently in custody over the incident. However, in a statement, the MBA's National Publicity Secretary said the officer had been identified as Darambi Vandi, an assistant superintendent of police. Well, joining us this morning to discuss this unfortunate incident and ending spate of police brutality, like I rightly mentioned, is Nika Gule. Uh, thank you for making our time to be with us this morning on the show. Thank you so much, Messi, and Merry Christmas to you and to our viewers. All right, then. Uh, what do you make of uh, the killing or shooting of an unarmed citizen? by a police officer who should protect her it is very sad and i will start by sending my condolences to the family of the lawyer his immediate family friends and colleagues and to us all nigerians on this senseless killing once again uh, like you rightly said by people who are being paid to protect us. They are paid to protect us, but it appears that when they wake up in the morning, they load their guns and come out to hunt Nigerians like a hunt game. And this is very sad. And not only because it is sad, but it is about who is next. As this kind of incidents don't seem to have an end, there's no ending in sight for it. And the reason why there is no ending in sight for it is because the government of Nigeria, the one that recruits, trains, arms, and deploys policemen ostensibly to protect us, but they end up hunting us down like game and killing us is doing absolutely nothing to stop these killings. As we have heard, the Inspector General of Police has issued a statement says he has condemned the killings. What's he condemning? This thing is happening every day. The lawyer's case is taking prominence probably because she's a lawyer, probably because it has happened in a metropolis like Lagos, I will assure you that as of yesterday, or sorry, on Christmas Day, when this thing happened, police would have killed some other innocent Nigerians elsewhere. But because uh, it is probably in a remote place, or the people are not well known, and it goes unreported. So the Inspector General simply condemning this is the usual rhetoric. It's not enough. We want to see policemen like this renegade policeman who just took an innocent life in Lagos to be locked up for life. They should be in jail for the rest of their lives because if they deprive a Nigerian of their life, then they shouldn't have a life of their own. Until we begin to see decisive action like this by the government who actually own this police force 
We are not going to see an end to this. And that is to me the scary part because it is just a matter of who is next. Well, another thing is, uh, I, I know that we have talked about, you know, ending police brutality, and this has become part of our lexicon, especially after, you know, the movement that we had, uh, 2022, there was some sort of remembrance. I mean, we're looking at two years. My question is, why do we still have, you know, this sort of treatment, you want to call it police brutality, that leads to the death of people, and... Uh, you know, police manhandling, maltreatment uh, still ongoing, even after, you know, this major movement in Nigeria? I, 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 I thank you for that question. <clears throat> I think the reason why, uh, despite the answers and the aftermath of it, and all the promises by the government to reform the police, and the SARS itself as an outfit was scrapped and all that have not yielded the desired results is because the government is not taking policing seriously it is not just about taking policemen into the police college or police training institutions and then bringing them out into society arming them and then unleashing them on the public there's a lot that needs to be to be done. For instance, I'll give you an example. A lot of these policemen are stressed. I believe that a lot of police in Nigeria are suffering from PTSD, that is post-traumatic stress disorder. Why? Because they have seen their colleagues murdered. They have seen the families of their colleagues kicked out of the barracks. They themselves are not being paid well. When you look at the typical Nigerian policeman, from the uniform he's wearing from top to, to, to bottom, and the, the rate at which he's begging and all of that, you look at their, their barracks, you know, you look at all of that around the policeman, you can see a man who is not settled in his mind. And so the government needs to put in place the structures that will ensure that a typical Nigerian policeman is well paid, well compensated, he lives in a decent environment, and when incidents around him occur, like in this case, the, the, the officer that shot this innocent lawyer, he did that shooting in the presence of his other colleagues who are also stressed from the incident, just as the family of the lawyer are also stressed from the incident. In an deep place, all these people should have come under counseling. Counseling that we try to resolve their, the psychological effects of what they have witnessed. But we don't have this in the Nigerian police force. So you have people who are on the road, who lack emotional intelligence, who are angry, who see themselves as demigods, who look at Nigerians as nuisance, and in an instant, they are pulling the trigger. Because you ask yourself, this lawyer was in a private car. This lawyer was obviously not armed. So why would the police pull a trigger on her? The policeman was not in immediate danger. The lawyer did not constitute any danger to the public. And for this man to pull a trigger on an innocent Nigerian taking their life shows you that this man is mentally and psychologically disordered. And the Nigerian government is not doing anything about that. And like you see, uh, Mercy, there are cases of police killings elsewhere in the world. I mean, we, 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 we read about the, 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 I mean, the, the famous case of, of the policeman killing the black man in the U.S. There are cases like that. Even in the U.K. where I live, the police sometimes do kill uh, innocent people. I mean, in, back in, uh, was it October, uh, they killed a black man sitting in his car in a street I'm in London. But the difference between those killings and in Nigeria is that you can see immediately, immediately that the, the police involved are arrested, they are, they are investigated, they are put through trial, and they spend time in jail. That is not happening in Nigeria. And if it's not happening, then regardless of what could have happened at NSAS and all the promises that we received, these killings 
will not will not stop. They will continue. And it is sad to think that it's just about who is next. So um, let's get to, you know, the conversation that everyone has seemed to be on, uh, the issue of reform. I mean, we have talked about reforms of uh, reforming the pleas, reforms, what have you, that seemed to be on top of the conversation. I mean, the reason for that process also was that uh, the pleas architecture needs to be overhauled and it needs to be a reform. But really, what sort of reform are we talking about? Do you think that reforming, um, you know, the system would bring an end, you know, to all of this brutality that the people get to face? We're talking about the citizen now, the ill treatment, uh, because we see that in the course of, you know, these police officers discharging their duties. So um, do you think that reforming the sector is a solution? The Nigeria police service is long overdue for reform, long overdue. Nigeria is perhaps one of the few countries that is still running a national police as we do, we do it. Uh, I tell people that if we have a target to join the top 20 industrialized nations in the world, we have no choice than to be doing the things that those nations are doing for them to be great and remain great. And there is no top 20 industrialized nation in the world that runs a national police as Nigeria is doing. Policing is pretty much local. You select the subnational governments, that is the local governments, the states, to run their police forces. In fact, if you go to places like the US, even universities have their police. You will see University of Chicago police. You know, so having this humongous national police with a single inspector general of police is a risk to the country by itself. It's a risk. Why? Because if that inspector general is not effective, it then means that the entire Nigeria will come under an effective police leadership. But imagine if we had 36 state police forces and the FCT. I mean, if 10 commissioners of uh, police in the state or for the states are not effective, you have 26 or 27 that are effective. So as Nigeria, we will have effective policing in some area. But now we put all our eggs in one basket. There's no industrialized nation that is running this system. So this system is archaic. This system is colonial. This system is not just paying us any dividends at all. That is the first one. The second one, even with the structure that we have now, the government is not funding the police adequately. The entire budget of the Nigerian police force, I mean, it, it could be less than 10 billion naira. Whereas the New York Police Department alone is spending over 12 billion dollars a year and people can say oh they are in america and uh, we are in nigeria we are spending naira but that's not the case the new york police department is buying arms from the same market that the nigerian police is buying the new york police department is buying motor vehicles from the same market uniforms and other um, uh, uh, you know equipment that they need for policing the New York Police Department and the Nigerian Police Department are buying those things from the same market. So imagine the New York Police Department arriving in that market with uh, uh, $1 billion in their pocket, and the Nigerian Police is arriving with $10 million. You can clearly see that the Nigerian Police, for 200 million people, with $10 million in the market, cannot even get what the New York Police Department are getting for one single unit and they are only policing less than 10 million people. So there are so many things that need to be reformed about the police. We can talk about them all day. The bottom line is that the current system that we are working is not actually effective. It's not delivering for us. No, no. so what, what part of the reforms uh, should we be looking at? I mean, I would like to cite an example. Should we look at the entry level? 
those who are getting into the system, what exactly should we be looking at? Because if we say reforms, it probably might just be vague. I remember vividly that there were also demands from the NSAS protests, uh, certain demands that were being placed. Because if, if we don't have this conversation, I'm not sure we're headed anywhere. We need to be very specific with what we, I mean, what the desire is or how to tackle all of these problems. Yeah, we, we, we have to start something. Like I was trying to, to, to conclude in my, in my last remarks, the 10th National Assembly must come and take decisive action on this. We need the laws that will enable some national governments have their policing. Well, I think we seem to have uh, been disconnected with Nika Gule. Uh, hopefully, we're able to have that connection. But we are talking about the issue of police brutality, especially with the death of uh, Bolanle Rahim, who was killed on Christmas Day. Very unfortunate. Yesterday, I happened to listen to a conversation on the radio, and I had some people saying, oh, you know, for, for instance, she's a lawyer. But, I mean, let's even leave the tags, whether or not she's a lawyer or whatever it is. The most important thing is that it's a human being and her life was actually taken short now nika gule is back uh, with us on this conversation uh just as i wait for you to i mean just go ahead with your thoughts i mean before we were disconnected by the network you had uh, a thought line just go ahead with it yes so thank you so much uh, mercy sorry my my connection was interrupted uh, like i was saying we we have paid leave service to this police reform for too long. The 10th National Assembly that will be inaugurated in June 2023 must take these police reforms as the first item on the agenda. We need a new police act that is going to break down this humongous colossus called the Nigerian Police Force at the national level and send policing down to even local government level. That should be the first step. And we must take that step. Otherwise, we're not going to we're not going to see um, an end to this uh, to these killings. You know, like I tell people, um, people are flying on holiday to Johannesburg. Uh, why they are not flying on holiday to Nigeria? Even though you stand a, a greater chance of having a knife in your back in Johannesburg, why? Because we have a police that is not responding to incidents, and they themselves become the 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 the, uh, the assaulters on, on nigerians on citizens and the world is looking at that and they're saying nigeria is a dangerous place i don't want to go there so this thing affects all of us like you said a life has been lost and the painful and scary aspect is that it's about who is next so action must be taken to stop this no, but um, as we move forward, because it feels like uh, there's no provision against mother. Mother is mother, right? Whether or not it's a police officer who commits this. How come we haven't really had uh, those who have been committing mother facing the law? That's a criminal act that's against that. I mean, the law is very explicit on mother. So why haven't we had a, uh, the implementation of that? Why? Is it that those who are involved in, you know, killings and uh, taking the lives of people not being made to face the law? Police officers, this is not the first instance, especially in 2022. And that is, that is the bottom line. What you have said now is the bottom line. I tell people that there is a direct correlation between law enforcement and development. All the places that Nigerians are jumping to, the UK, Canada, US, Australia, all those places, when you go there, you will see the law enforcement regime is stringent. The more stringent the law enforcement regime, the better a place. That's just the simple truth. So until we begin to visit consequence management on people who are breaking the law in nigeria we are never going to get it we're never going to get it it, it, it was in the plan of creation that god made humanity to be led 
and humanity to be led by laws. That is just what it is. Anywhere you go and you see sanity, you see things working well, you see citizens behaving orderly, check the law enforcement in that place. It's very strong. And this is why in Nigeria, we must begin to visit consequence management on perpetrators of criminal activities like this police officer who just shot dead this lawyer. And it doesn't matter your position in, in, in society. In fact, in other places, the higher place you are, the better for the law to come after you. You know, and in Nigeria, we're not doing that. There are many people who are above the law in Nigeria. And the law is only being applied to those who cannot pay themselves out from the stranglehold of the law. And the next president of Nigeria should actually have one single objective. His objective should be law enforcement. Once the next president begins to enforce the law, every other thing will begin to work smoothly in Nigeria. You will see ministers working well, permanent secretaries, directors, civil servants, the roads will be sanitized, nobody will chop contract money, just because that president is enforcing the law. So that is the missing link that has pinned Nigeria down in underdevelopment. So, well, I, I just hope that we're able to fix that missing link, just like you have mentioned, the issue of enforcing the law, because uh, if we even continue to say, let's have the reforms, what's the essence? I mean, not to say that that's not important, but you begin to ask yourself, uh, what becomes of us when we're not big on implementing the law? Because if we even, at any point, have the respect for the law, and all of these police officers who have been engaged in, you know, the mother of citizens, I'd like not to use the word innocent because you have to be proven by court of competence jurisdiction before anything can happen. And so uh, taking the lives of people, unarmed citizens and what have you, uh, why has the law not taken its cost? So it's another part of the conversation that we should be looking at in terms of uh, the issue of police brutality and the reforms that we're calling for, for the police. We have to get to a point where we are able to implement and enforce this law. That's the only way, uh, just like you have mentioned. Thank you so much, Nika Gule, for being part of the show this morning. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you so much, Mercy, and have a nice day. You too. And uh, we just take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at a second conversation. Please stay with us.